I, you told me several times and I forgot. I happen, I, to forgot. Be, I happen to be named for the man who signed the United States Constitution for the state of North Carolina. Yeah. I'm one of your founding fucking fathers. Shit just got weird, man. Uh, powdered wig and uh, signed the document with the quill pen. Uh, somebody in my bloodline did that. Well, yeah, tell, they did. Tell him his name. Richard Dobbs Spate. Which also happens to be, a little trivia, my name. So I am part of you. We are all sprung from the same political loins. The founding fathers have founded this great state. Here we are together sharing this experience. O-M-C. It's awesome. It's awesome and it's all playing out in your back door right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh my goodness. Not only... Are we related? Not only am I one of your founding fathers, not only are you the good people of the South, but you, more importantly than all of that, you and the people around you, the people near you, the people you hold dear, and the people you have never laid eyes on before, all of you in this collective room, all of you have one special label that cannot be jettisoned from your person when you leave here. You own this, and this becomes part of you from here forward. You, all of you, right now, this moment, you are officially sanctified and anointed as a Friday person. That makes you special. That makes you unique. That means you get it. You understand it in a deep level that nobody else ever will. People who show up tomorrow, you look at them, you'll think, oh, wow, so sad. So green, so naive. They don't understand. They don't understand what it's like to commit to a three-day con for all three freaking days. That's what this is about. They don't know. You have all the opportunity to embarrass yourself and overspend for all three days. They're going to try to compact all that into 48, 24 hours. <laughs> they'll, never, they'll never achieve what you're going to achieve. They will never be there because you'll be ramping up all day long, getting ready for karaoke. You will wake up, put your bottom in the seat bright and early, and see the cavalcade of guests all day tomorrow that lead up to Saturday night special. And then you will rise with the chickens and be here again on Sunday to see the two gangly leads of the show you have come to know and love, the only television program officially sanctioned by Satan himself, Supernatural. You'll be here for that. On the Sabbath, you will shun all things holy and be as dark as humanly possible, upsetting your grandmother to no end. But that's okay. That's okay, Nana. There'll be another Sunday next week. There won't be any Jared and Jensen next week. Not right in front of me. Not with my arms wrapped around them in a photo op. Not doing a sandwich. What's a sandwich? You don't want to know, Nana. Let's just say it involves bread and meat, and you don't need to see the photo. You don't need to see that photo. <laughs> and you're going to do it all. All weekend long, like your own living music video, you're going to do it all with the rock and roll sonic backdrop provided by Loudon Swain over here to my left. Oh, they're here, and they're doing it, and they ain't stopping all weekend long, and it starts with the thunder and thumping of the drum man himself, Mr. Stephen Norton. <laughs> On the bass guitar. All the way from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The best robot in the band. <laughs> robot Michael Borja. Uh-huh. That's what I'm talking about. I'm playing the sixth green for this ensemble. Guitarist extraordinaire, a man who is here to ruin your life, destroy your marriage, and leave you wanting more and give you nothing. Because he has no emotions, only skill. And he uses it to ruin everything you hold dear. Ladies and gentlemen, the patron saint of suddenly giving a shit, Billy 
Moran. Oh, wow. And fronting this ensemble, a khaki-wearing renegade, poet, lyricist, singer, and god on television, Rob Benedict. Give him hell, Robbie. Is it you? Is it me? Search the things you can see. Going blind out of reach. Somewhere in that city. Charlotte, <clears throat> hold on a second. We're a well-oiled machine. We've got this under control. Uh, what do you need? Who's the first guest? Oh, it's um, <clears throat> it's Ranger Warner. <laughs> We've got a surprise for you for our first guest. <laughs> See, Robbie and I don't <clears throat> discuss the day or really know what's going on when we do these conventions. That's that's part of our mystique. Now, usually there's a banner hanging here that tells us who's in the, but they moved it and it's now we're- we can't, say that we can't see. It's like they're messing with us on purpose, Robbie. Yeah. They're doing it just to be jerks, but I'm not gonna get mad at them. How can I be mad at them? I can't be mad at them when I'm right here with you, Charlotte. I don't want you to see me angry, not yet. Oh, you'll see me angry, but that'll be on purpose and well-timed for your viewing pleasure right now. It's all about happiness and joy and light. And let's get this party started. And let's do it with one of the coolest, smartest women on the circuit. She put bad and ass together and made it a moniker she wears proudly. Ladies and gentlemen, Rachel Miner. <laughs> Is here. No, it's supposed, to be, it's supposed to be bad at. Oh, damn it. Rachel. Yes. How the hell are you? I'm good. How are you? Did you miss your calling as a beat poet? I think so. <laughs> a beat poet, really? I miss. There's a lot of people who called, and I'm trying to miss those calls. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting flooded with calls. I, mean, I was sitting back there listening to that like stream of consciousness, amazing, like inspiring with chickens thing, whatever that was. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I get off the stage and Robbie and I go, what the hell happened? That, that's <laughs> usually how we it, translate the It was events. really awesome. Well, thank you, Rachel. Yes. You're too kind. Literally, oh, far true. too kind. <laughs> Charlotte, North Carolina, a lot of conventions roll into a new town and they bring out crap entertainment because why not? It's a Friday, but not us. We love our Friday people. That's why we bring you the best. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Rachel Miner. Hello, guys. This is, you guys are incredible. This is a really big room. <laughs> it's like no matter what you do, it's going to feel empty. Um, thank you for like congregating in the center. How are you having a good start to your con? I do, I love it. I, I always, I, it almost feels redundant, but it's not because I see different faces out there every time and you guys move me beyond words. I just love you tremendously. <laughs> love you so much. Uh, so, so, are you ready to have an amazing weekend? Is it good? Okay. Awesome, because it just gets better from here. I start you out and then, okay. Do we have some questions? Actually, no, I forgot to plan a question. We, we don't, we, we can just like chat for a while. Okay, well, yeah. I drove three hours to be here.
for Friday. Nice. For you. Oh you my God. And you, and you didn't think of any of the questions while you were driving or? So I was trying not to die. You <laughs> oh, that, that, that's probably better. I'm glad you made it. Yeah, I'm and, glad and, I'm here too. And thank you for that. For that, that was yeah. really kind. I'm really, I'm really glad. And I did want to say that, um, yeah, I've been following you on Twitter for about a year now. Oh. Uh, you and Tim Omenson, I basically follow yes. you guys. Yes. And I have you in my bio as my. Wait, my I was going to say, are you the one with the bio? You've got an awesome bio. I love that. Can you tell everyone here what your bio is? My bio is, um, I said, Rachel Miner should be ruling the world with Misha Collins. I'll take that. I have since amended that. I've actually amended it, and now it says uh, she should be ruling the world uh, with Tim Omenson with right. Misha advising. Okay. Because yeah. I don't think he should have that much power. He, he got demoted. <laughs> I'll let him know. I'm a little concerned about that. But thank you. I'm so glad that you're here. I just... So happy. I'm so glad to be here. I really am. And Charlotte is beautiful. Oh, oh, that that was it. No, oh, yeah. I, so I'm ruling the world, and that's what will we'll, you know? Does it get any better than that? Should I just go? <laughs> What's um. up? Um, hi. So, just saying, I love your character the best. I really think Meg should come back, just FYI. Thank um, you. <laughs> and, um, so your character's like the icon for sass in the show, so I was wondering... I love that. <laughs> Let's, uh, like, uh, just let me take that in. I like that. I was wondering if there's, like, any off-the-screen tea, like, any sass off-the-screen that was really funny that you want to spill? Um, well, they wrote that really, like her, like Meg Sass, I can't take total credit for because she was always written brilliantly and I got to say the best lines. Um, so that is a combo of me and the writers that bring the sass that is Meg. Um, so I don't know that there's anything, uh, backstage. I, I don't. I also think sass for me is always unconscious. Like it's, it's, it's like that thing you say off the cuff that you don't even realize. Cause like to me, it's always like very obvious and true. And I'm just pointing out the obvious, but then people will think that like, it's kind of cutting and funny. Um, I won't realize it. Uh, did that make sense? So I actually don't record my own sass. I don't know. I mean, you're just a naturally sassy person. That's I, the I, best. Guess, I guess it, it just comes out naturally. Well, thank you. No, you're awesome. Thank you so much. And, the, and I am with you. I am a fan girl for Meg. Hey. Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Um, so I was in Denver last weekend. Awesome. And Denver was so much fun. It was, it was so much an fun. amazing weekend. It really was. Um, Not as amazing as this one is going to be. <laughs> Obviously. Exactly. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, so I don't know if you remember, but there was a really lovely girl there named Krista who did Mad Libs. Yes. And on Sunday, Richard made the comment that he thought we should do it at every con. Nice. So if you don't mind, could I have a noun and an adjective? Okay, well, last time I, I got it from you guys, uh, so, uh, so we can do that again. By the way, I do, uh, I have had Mad Lib scheduled for a while for indie. That is what I'm supposed, that's my, like, thing that I'm supposed to do. So I'm glad it's catching on. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. It was one of my favorite parts of Denver, so it was really fun. So you need a noun and an adjective. Yes, please. Okay, noun. Who who wants to? Do you guys have a noun? Uh, Impala. I heard. <laughs> okay, so we've got. Well, okay, so we've got Impala. Okay. Which I think could be changed for like baby Impala. Like it's all. One. Just some That's right. synonym. Yeah. Yes. We'll go with whatever uh, is funnier. Okay. <laughs> and, and an adjective? Sassy. <laughs> We've got sassy. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you all. It's a, it's a good uh, kind of dry run of the Mad Libs that, at Indy that will be coming. 
Um, so thank you. And I'm very, I'm looking forward to seeing what that story is. Hi. Hey, what's up? Um, sorry, I'm really nervous, so. Oh, nothing, no, please. <laughs> It's a weird construct to like you, you stand around up there and then people stare at you and <laughs> somehow I'm very comfortable with it. It's, it's how I do. Um, I was wondering if you could go back in time to five minutes before you went into the audition for Meg, what would you tell yourself about your experience? Nothing, because it wound me up here. <laughs> um, I, th I, think if, I think if I'd uh, had in my head like what might come, uh, what my, the future might hold, it, it would have totally thrown me. Whereas uh, when I went into the room, I was literally I was just enjoying being Meg. Um, and I think that's, that's the way to go. She, like from the get go, I just loved saying her words and uh, she was just so much fun to embody. So, um, so that was all I was thinking about and that should be all I was thinking about, so yeah. But oh my goodness, what an amazing ride this has been. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I don't, I think it's too much for, to, to take in at once, right. um, but it's been everything, it's been incredible. So thank you guys so much for thank that. Thank you. Hey. Hi, um, firstly, I know we talk a lot about Jerry Jensen and this and that, Misha, but um, I was going back and forth about whether to buy tickets until they announced you, and then I went ahead and immediately bought tickets. So uh, please tell Creation we 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 like you. I, I am <laughs> we want you. Very honored. I'm guessing they just heard that. I don't know. <laughs> Did you hear Creation? We like Rachel. <laughs> I'm really honored by that. By the way, I love your shirt too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Designed by one of my favorite actors. Um, so. Um, I just wanted to know how you felt about um, about Meg's redemption arc, and um, w as we know, every time someone gets redeemed, they die. Um, <laughs> there is that. So, <laughs> so we saw it coming, and we were cringing the whole way. And how did you feel about it? I actually loved it. I loved every second of it because um, I absolutely love the Meg cast dynamic. Um, I thought they were incredible together, and I, I liked seeing them um, play off of each other. Um, somehow that sounded dirty. <laughs> um, but, uh, so there's that. I love that Meg found, because she was always very loyal, and I love that she found where that loyalty was kind of meant to be placed. Um, I also, I don't mind that she died, and here's why, because we so rarely get to see a woman be the brave one, the one to rescue, the one to sacrifice, and I was so grateful to get to be that. I have never wanted to be the woman to like, throw the shoe at a man during a fight, or whatever. Uh, that is not okay. I, I love your applause, because I think we all need that. We need more of that, so yes. So yeah, so I'll, t I'll take uh, dying on the show, if that's the reason. Hey. Hi, so I was just wondering, there's so many strong and yet very entertaining aspects to Meg. What was your favorite moment of playing Meg between like the Clarence relationship and then the kissing of the guys? and just the sarcastic, witty banter. What was that favorite moment that you had on set of playing Meg? That's a really good question. I, gosh, I loved every <laughs> second of it. Um, I think, I, and it's because I'm a total mush, and I kind of feel bad, like, I, I feel like I'm betraying, like, because there were so many strong, awesome moments where she, uh, and so many great one-liners to the guys and so forth. Uh, okay, I'll give you two then. There was the first episode and first scene I ever got to do when I got to beat up Jared. <laughs> that was pretty empowering. Because <laughs> there's not a lot, like size-wise, he kind of has me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but it was so much fun to just get <laughs> to kick the booty out of him. Um, and then, uh, but really my favorite 
uh, moment was that last scene with Sam, um, where I got to say, go save your brother, my unicorn. Um, because I think that summed up everything, so. Thank you, that was awesome. What about you, do you have an answer to that? Was there a favorite Meg moment? Not specifically, no. Okay, maybe. Um, yeah. <laughs> when you pushed Misha up against the wall. <laughs> it's pretty, it was pretty fun. That, that, whole, that whole sequence was pretty darn fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hey. So you're a really big source of inspiration for me, for your kindness and your strength. So, so I was wondering who or what inspires you? Oh my gosh, thank you for that. Um, I'll try not to like cry on the no. end. Yeah. Me too. But uh, <laughs> like my strength. Um, but we can cry and be strong. Absolutely. Um, yes. Uh, so, so many people inspire me every minute of the, every day. You guys freaking inspire me. Um, that it, you are why I'm here. Uh, there's no doubt uh, about that whatsoever. Um, the, we all are struggling through things in life and the fact that well, you, any of us, kind of pull ourselves up and put ourselves out in the world despite the fact that we know we are probably going to be hurt um, and yet we want to make the world better for each other and connect to each other and that is just, it's, it's the little moments that yes. inspire me. Yes. Um, and it is the fact that you guys are all sitting here <laughs> um, and uh, the love that you have and aren't afraid to show, whether it's for Supernatural or for each other or for another person that takes bravery and you rock. Um, beyond that, there are, there are certain people that have always been touchstones for me. Uh, like Gandhi is definitely one. Mm -hmm. um, Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King. I think they're, they're, they've pulled a lot of us through. <laughs> but uh, Dalai Lama, um, uh, the 14th. And yeah, so they're, they're um, I, do, I do, do look for those people. Um, uh, I've, in all through history, whenever I'm learning, William Wil Wilberforce with another one. <laughs> I mean, I'm just trying to think, but it's just every time that I see people that are brave enough yes. to uh, break through the status quo just to make the world better for others, that is what inspires me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that amazing question. You're amazing. You inspired me greatly. Rachel, nice to see you again. It's great to see you. <laughs> um, so I was just curious what exactly goes into the selection process for a person or charity that you may have a campaign for for Random Acts. Um, there's, a, there's a lot. We really look for what is going to impact and create the most good, like ripple out in the world. Um, we also, I think one of the magic things about Random Acts is that um, we can find people, organizations, causes, and everything that maybe haven't gotten highlighted enough or have fallen through the cracks, and we can bring attention to that. I think that is part of uh, our strength. Um, so we're constantly looking for that, and, and stories that inspire as well. Um, I think it makes, like, you know, just think about, I, I'm thinking about Olive's story right now for the collective in Rwanda. And she is just such a good person that to me it's a no-brainer that of course you want to support her because she wants to put good into the world, if that makes sense. And so, um, so we're always just trying to do more of that and also, um, I like that we're not telling people what they need to do to be happy or be better. We're asking people or organizations or movements or whatever what they need. Um, and, 
And so I think that that's another aspect. We're not going around going, oh, we're going to fix everyone by doing this thing and telling you that you need, if you just have X, then you know you will be a better, happier person. The world will run better because I don't think that that tends to work. Does all of that make sense? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. So, and I don't know. We just do our best. So. Oh, hi. You're hi. awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you had to pick one word to describe yourself. What would that word be? Uh, I like that. Someone said tenacious. Um, it's very true. Very, I think, I think, uh, stubborn is, is definitely willful, stubborn, tenacious. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that actually sums me up pretty well because it's even in my, you know, I, I try, I think the things that I care about the most are like being kind or being um, a source of positivity or hope. But um, all of that is probably just because I'm willful, because I am stubborn, because I have this image in my head from when I was a little kid of what the world could be. And, uh, and I stick to that. And I don't care what the world tells me it is. I'm like, no, you're going to, I, I see this other possibility. So um, I guess all that makes sense. But um, the main thing is that I just, I guess I, tr I try to just stick to I am, which is a silly thing. But it's like, I try not to actually put labels or whatever, it's just I'm going to exist and be here and, and talk to you and um, I don't know, does any of that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Do you have a word for me? <laughs> Do you have a word for you? Um, surviving. Nice. Yes. I love that. Oh and, and believe me, surviving takes tenacity. So... Good for you. Hi. Hey. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Um, first of all, I just want to say that you, as Meg, it was literally one of the best things about Supernatural for me. You gave Meg this wonderfully sexy, charming, sarcastic, witty type of personality, and I just, I cannot believe you pulled that off, and it was great. That means so much. Thank you. <laughs> and um, the question I had was, most of the time with you, being with the boys in the show, I always wondered how you mentally put yourself in between, you know, because Sam and Dean and you were always clashing and there was a lot of tension. And so mentally, how did you have to build yourself up to that? I don't know. One of the things I loved about Meg, even though I, you know, yeah, she was clashing. A lot of the time, I think she was correct in her summation of like, she often just found those little like weaknesses or out points or whatever, and they were kind of humorous to her. So like, I, I felt like she was more kind of puckish. Do you know that with like the, you know, in her nature, like just a little bit impish in terms of the way she went. Like it wasn't that she so much was, I mean, yeah, she was trying to kill him sometimes or whatever, but. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but it was with a, a lightness. <laughs> he was laughing about it. Um, no, but also I, I love the fact that she kind of had this perspective on the world and that gave me a lot of strength to do that is that it really in the grand scheme of things, when you've seen as much history as she has seen and stuff, whatever that these guys were thinking were like so super important and, and uh, meaningful at that time. It's really just a blip. And I think that that was where she was coming from a lot of the time. Um, it wasn't, you know, this huge deal. Uh, and she kind of laughed at that. Um, and then just uh, one other thing you said that was really cool is you said she was sexy. And I love that you would say that because one of the things that I really loved about Meg as a character is she wasn't like selling sex. Like that wasn't who she was. 
uh, it wasn't particularly gendered even. Um, she, she was strong, she was who she was, but she wasn't like, I guess, I guess sometimes, especially early on the show, like some of the demon characters really use that uh, to try to get power, that kind of um, sexual identity or whatever. And I don't feel like Meg did. Um, and so, uh, so I love that you still said she was sexy because I'm like, I don't think she particularly tried for that. And I love that within the dynamic between her and Cass too, it wasn't like, um, there was definitely respect and love there. And that is sexy to me, that kind of banter and that respect, that is what is sexy. Not that all the other just seems silly to me, but, um, but yeah, it's not, I guess, the typical um, version of that, if that makes sense. So. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hi, um, how are you doing? I'm all right. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask, um, what got you into acting to start with? Like, what point in your life did you stop and say, I don't want to do this anymore, I want to act? That's a really good question. Um, I was really young, so we're going back to like two, four, around that age. Um, I wanted to be a lot of things, so I wanted to be a paleontologist and an astronaut and a ballerina and a chef. Um, I'm trying to remember, there was a lot, like basically anything I saw, I wanted to be that too, because it was cool. Um, so acting when I saw acting and I came across that, it made total sense because I could be all of those things. Um, and I also, um, I fell in love with a lot of like fantasy shows and stuff. I, there was an old British version of Alice in Wonderland that I just was totally enamored with and would watch over and over. I watched Star Wars over and over and over again. Um, yes. Um, and legend and labyrinth and as these all all these like magical worlds came about and I wanted to be able to live there too so I think my idea of acting was that was my only chance to like get to Wonderland like that that, that was because she was an actress and she got to go uh, makes sense um, so yeah so that's I think where the impetus was born out of um, I really, I wanted, I genuinely want to be those people. And I do remember um, maybe like seven years old, somewhere around there that I started to understand like fame and that whole aspect. And then I was like, I don't know if I want to be an actress. And my mom said, why? And I said, because I don't want to be famous. Like that was just a gross concept. Like that did <laughs> not look fun. Um, uh, so yes, it was really about embodying things, but, but I was very determined from about two, so. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Amanda. Hi. I'm so nervous. Uh, this Hello. is my first con, and I just wanted to say that. Well, thank you for braving it and coming up here. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. I've been watching since season one, episode one, and I've been oh. dying to get here. Um, but you are. I'm so glad to meet you. Thank you. You're my most favorite badass woman of the show. Ever. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> seriously. So um, my question is, is that everybody always asks, like, what was your favorite episode to play and, and, and to do? And so I guess my question would be because it actually was taken. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you the opposite. What is the worst episode or, or your least favorite episode that you've you have done? Oh, that's a, that's a fascinating question. But um, on Supernatural, none. I, I had an amazing time. I just genuinely did. It wasn't easy. I mean, there were times we were shooting in rain and cold and late at night and things like that. So well, I know that the, there were moments that were difficult, but I never... The, the group of people is so magically kind and yeah. wonderful. Like, it really is. I know, I know there was, like, a reason you guys are all drawn to this show. Like, you get a sense... But I, you're not wrong. Like, it's just abnormally filled with 
really decent, kind, good I, people. That's the reason why I watch. It's, it's, you all have just wonderful souls and spirits to you and just the whole cast and everything. That's why I'm so excited, but yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. And I, and I know that didn't really answer your question, but I'm glad you no, understand okay, where I'm coming from. I'm just happy to have asked you a question. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's amazing. And you're, you're wonderful. And thank you for that. I love you. Awesome. Bye. Hi, um, Hi, I have a question. So, potential sport for people. As you guys, uh, Bobby and Charlie have come back from the alternate, you think there might be a potential Meg, Meg coming back? I don't know. Are there, I, you know if there's any writers watching this, should I, they, you can, <laughs> they could answer you. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's supernatural. There are always possibilities, but I also freaking love watching whatever is happening. And I love all these characters as much as you guys do. So, um, so it was super fun just getting to see everything unravel. So I don't want you to think I'm not sitting here like, when are they bringing me back? They don't love me. Uh, maybe I feel that way. <laughs> Um, no, but I, I, I would always, of course, like in a heartbeat any time. Uh, but, and, and I will bring it back to something else, which is that I've been asked, like I know in Denver, I was asked um, if I could, if I went back, if I could cheat to, you know, stand or walk some of the time or whatever. And I was like, no, if I went back, if I personally did, I'd really, it'd be important to me to be in the chair. Um, because we need more representation out there. So, thank you. Thank you guys for applauding that. But, yeah, and it's true. It's all of us. It's all of our stories. It's because being human does not involve being perfect and fitting some cookie cutter, homogenized, whatever that is that we see too much of the time. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's like all of us need to be represented and we need to have that out there. So. Thank you. Thank you for that. Hey. Hey, how are you? Um, Good, how are you? Now I'm shaking. See, I laughed at her, and now I'm shaking. Awesome. <laughs> um, I know, if it's not but too it, personal. Okay, I just want to stop for a second and say, how freaking awesome is it that we can feel that strongly? That that is what this event is about. Like, that's amazing. That we are so excited to see each other, and... We, there's all of this like emotion that is involved like, with that. So yes, feel it, <laughs> live it. I love it. Well, um, and I hope it's not too personal to ask, but as someone who was born with a chronic to terminal illness, mm. and you pretty much know what the outcome's going to be, how how did you find the positivity in being diagnosed with something later? How do you find those moments to like? stay glass half full, because I know it's very easy to slip the other direction, but you've been such a light for so many people and an inspiration. How did you find that positivity? Thank you for saying that. And, um, and thank you for finding it too. It's not, I, I, I don't want like there to be illusions. It's, it's not easy and right. it's a daily uh, struggle to find it. I think it gets easier the more you kind of reset your thinking so I know that like I tend to see kind of just the practical because it, it's like selfishly it's just an easier place to live. So it's like I'll be literally, I fell on the ground and I can't get up or whatever, but the sky is really pretty and there's, you know, whatever. There's always good things around. There's always something positive you can find about it. And for goodness sake, it just makes life better and easier. Um, I know that from uh, a story, when I got my, the diagnosis, uh, the doctor told me, and my first instinct was I went into kind of action mode of, I was like, okay, so what do I need to do and how do I structure this and, and you know, how do I establish this and, you know, whatever. And because I was kind of proactive and positive, the doctor was like, you do understand it's bad news, right? <laughs> Like, you know this is not going to be easy. Um, right, it's, it's work. It's, yeah. <laughs> mine, and, mine's lungs. I have cystic fibrosis. So raising yeah. awareness. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But you know what? And here's, like, the really important thing to me is 
all of us have something. Mm -hmm. We are all battling through, we're all doing our best. It's freaking hard. And uh, we all are trying to overcome whatever we're trying to overcome. And I think that the more we let go of the illusion that like there's this perfect easy life that someone else has, and it's just difficult for me that the healthier and, and, and better we are and the more we can be there for each other. So, um, so that's probably the thing I tether myself to the most is, hey, the world still needs me and other people still need me to help with their fight too. Yeah. And I think that always helps to give me perspective. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dale. And you're a badass, so. Hi. Hey. Um, so my question is, in the beginning, Meg was really one of our first strong, reoccurring female characters. But as the show has moved on, more and more characters have been introduced at a variety of ages and positions, and like a lot of their thoughts are very different. So who do you think... Meg would get along with the best uh, out of the new female characters, and who do you think she would clash with the most? That's a really good question. By the way, I want to acknowledge, they've done a really good job. There are so many yeah. awesome characters out there, the female characters, and we really needed that, so that's awesome. Okay, so Rachel would probably get along the best with Charlie, because uh, <laughs> she's a total nerd. Um, <laughs> So, uh, but I think Meg would probably get along the best with Rowena. Yeah. I would love to, I lo would love, I also love Ruth dearly, and I think she does such an amazing job with that role. But I would love to see what those two would conjure up together. I think that'd be super fun. <laughs> they would mess with the boys so much. Yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you think? Um, I agree that she would probably get along the best with Rowena, um, and for some reason I think that she would really clash with either Jody or Donna, just because they're very strong, maternal, caring people, yeah. and her mischief would probably irritate them. Uh, I, I, think, I think they would irritate her to no end, too. <laughs> like, she would not understand them at all. If she didn't understand stopping to save a dog, she really would not get yeah. them. They would just bewilder her constantly, which would be very funny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hey. Uh, so this is also my first convention. And actually, Welcome. I brought my mom for her first. And it's actually her 60th birthday present, too. Happy birthday! <laughs> That's awesome. And so, I, can I just also say, it's one of my favorite things at these cons, that it, so many people share the love of this show uh, with family members. And that's just really special uh, and rare. So you guys rock. Yeah. So my question is, given that Meg is still and will forever be a demon, um, if she was in today's story arc, do you think that she would be leaning more towards with Sam and Dean, or do you think she would stay true to Lucifer? That's a really good question. I am open to uh, other theories, but I think actually where her loyalty would stick and wouldn't waver is cast. Yeah. She had us a, a real soft spot there. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hey. <laughs> You're awesome, first of all. Thank um, you. Second of all. So um, are you. Thank you. Um, my question for you was that if you could play any other demon or angel, um, past or present, um, who would you be and why? Oh, from the show? Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, it, one of the things is I would it would have to be the actor playing them because I love the character as a whole with all these characters. I would love to either be, I think, Crowley or, or Cass. I yeah. think for the other two, that would be like super fun. But I'd have to be like Misha or Mark playing those characters. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. Yes, ma'am. Thank yeah. you so much. My turn. Hey. Hey. 
So this question is from my daughter, who is too shy to come up here. Hi, Katie. Oh, uh, okay, so but, she, but it's cool because it's I not had, like you just called her out. I on had it. to call her out if I'm going to do the leg. So it's totally not right? public. I promise, no one knows. <laughs> Nobody knows, right? Shh, sorry. Okay, so my question is: with Meg being played by two or you know, you have several different female characters. Yes. So when you came into the role. How did you uh, kind of adjust for the fact that other people had played the same person while bringing your own kind of flair to it? That's a good question. I, well, the lucky thing is I hadn't, like I didn't have a lot, I hadn't watched the show yet, so I didn't have it all in my head. Um, I then got to go back and watch the show and everyone knows how enjoyable that is. Binging the show is so much fun. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I didn't have like, a lot in my head ahead of time of who, what I had to live up to. But um, I guess it, she make just always made sense to me, which I think is how you know something is right for you. It's just like, no, it was like breathing. It just, she made sense. And I lo it totally made sense to me that like, of course demons inhabit meat suits. And like, so there would be different versions. Uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I love that kind of through line sense. I think you did a flawless job of incorporating the other Megs into you. It felt like the same Thank person, you. like literally in a different body. So Thank you for that. And I just love the fact that that's actually your real voice and you own it. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I was impressed. Thank you. And it's also probably like much easier than what poor Misha got himself into. <laughs> Howdy. Hey. How are you? Um, Good, how so, are you? Um, since this show has started, you have been my favorite demon. And Thank you. I, I really don't like any of the other ones, but you stood <laughs> out to I, me. I'm honored. <laughs> I'm like, this girl, this girl is like seriously rad. And Good. I guess what I want to ask is if you could give us um, a piece of life advice, what it what would it be? Because honestly, we need more fierce ladies like you. Thank you. That's awesome. So uh, it's me, not Meg, giving the advice. What or, did what? I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you did. What was that? I didn't. Hear. Oh no, no. I was, no. I was just asking. It was me giving the advice, or Meg giving the advice. No, but, you, you as a person. Okay. Um, I will say, so on the female, like, strength version. Yes. Um, don't, like, for all of us, don't apologize for who you are. And that doesn't mean that we can't be sensitive to each other or want to make each other feel good. Like, I, I actually have trouble with that whole, like, anti-PC movement, because a lot of times what's considered politically correct or PC is just basic empathy. It's like, of course I'm not gonna say something I know is going to make someone feel like shit. That's just, like, that's a given. Um, but on the other hand, I think a lot of women were constantly apologetic for no particular reason. We had perfectly fine intentions. We want to do good by others. And yet we're like, is it okay if I take up space at all? Like, you know, and that's uh, our natural, ten and I think we all have to get over that. And that's one of the things that I learned from Meg and I love about Meg. She does not apologize uh, for who she is and for being there and existing. And I think that that's really important. Is that? Yeah, that's really good because I do. I apologize for everything. And I know there's several other people that do it too. So, yeah. Don't apologize yeah. for nothing. Well, because it, it's also, it's just... Be a Meg. That's right. Well, it's just an indoctrinated thing that we feel like we're just inherently, like our set point is we're supposed to be guilty and feel bad. <laughs> um, and and it just, it's not a truth. Because the truth is you can probably do more good for each other if you're not scared and you're not introverted and you're not worried about the way that you might per be perceived by others all the time. Um, so that's what we have to get over because I can actually be here and care about you without, you know, looking in the mirror um, and worrying. So, yeah. 
Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. It was an awesome question. Love you. Hi. Hey. This is absolutely surreal. I came to Charlotte because you were going to be here. We drove oh. down from D.C. So I, I find your chronic in illness journey is very inspiring as someone with a chronic illness myself. Yeah. So I caught up on Supernatural. I've marathoned laying in bed being sick. So wow. I was curious. Well, you thank you. Wait, just first of all, thank you for taking the time and coming here and battling all of that. And yeah. I, I find your journey so inspiring when I, when I read about it. You know, it's, it's really something. Do you still watch the show? Yes, I yes. do. Yes, absolutely. I was super curious because, you know, it's... I actually watch it more because I don't yes. love watching myself. And do you get so, to visit the uh, set or anything to, like, get ahead of time knowing what's happening? Um, what do I... No, I mean, I, I'm usually learning as you guys are. Even when I was on the show, I was usually learning when I got the script. So, um, so yeah, so it's not like I'm like super aware of everything that's going to be coming down uh, the pike, but I think it's enjoyable that way. Um, yeah. Glad you still watch the show. I was just... Thank you. Oh. Thank you. And can I say something about the trajectory of like having an illness and all these things? Um, if there's one thing I've learned, it's that uh, I don't, I no longer worry or question so much about uh, life in terms of um, I think before getting sick, I was always trying to like, I was always worried about having to plan everything out and have an idea of what the future should look like and what I was working toward and all these things, which is great, except um, sometimes I feel I missed what was kind of naturally where I was being pulled or what was where I fit. And, um, and I've had to learn to trust more um, and what an amazing example of, of luck or serendipity or um, whatever it is that, like, if I hadn't gotten sick, I probably never would have ended up becoming uh, the ED of Random Acts, which is the most fulfilling, most amazing thing I've ever gotten to do in my life. So, um, so yeah, be open to the fact that these can be little blessings too. Hey. Hi. Um, How I are you? To, I'm good. Um, I wanted to know if it was awkward to kind of act when, like, you know how Meg's in love with Cass, sort of? Yeah. And was it kind of are you, awkward? Are, are you going to ask what's like, is it awkward working with, like, really good looking guys? <laughs> I feel awkward right now walking in at that moment. I'm so sorry. Don't let me interrupt. You go ahead and answer. Um, well, it was perfect. I was talking about you. Oh, I, I know. I mean, get out. I'll stop. Go ahead. Just, well, just, after a while, you realize that Rich is just a human. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> No one will ever realize that. Sorry. No, okay. well, we, she was asking anyway, you to yes. cast the no, Finish your question, though. What's up? Um, was it kind of awkward to, like, kiss him? or? <laughs> it was kind of gross. <laughs> Finally, an honest answer on this stage. Charlotte, first time ever somebody told the truth. And it was Rachel Miner. <laughs> Ready? Richard. Band. So now, you know what happens? What happens? Break time. 
Uh, yeah, I know we're, uh, we're going to do a little uh, private acoustic show for I, 20 people. That's awesome. I think people who, who want to sign up for karaoke, that's supposed to happen right now. <sighs> yeah. So, so the rest of you are taking a little break, and then we'll be right back here for some more action. Are we? Are we coming back? Yeah, oh, yeah, we're coming back. More action? For the next 72 hours. All right, perfect. <laughs> we'll see you in a few minutes, everybody. I know, I, I realized it.